Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, people of God, we welcome you to today's Bible study session, uh, interactive Bible study with Prophet Nifemi Akitimei. I welcome you to this episode 11, and this is going to be the last um, episode for this uh, topic that we have been treating for the past six weeks on six things that the Lord hates. And uh, the text is from Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 16 to 19. So today we are taking the last one. But before we continue, I want you to bow down your heads in prayers. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We glorify your name. We thank you for how you've brought us this far. We give you all the glory because only you are worthy of our praises, O Lord. Be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Father, we are thanking you for every good things you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for our lives. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our jobs. We thank you for everything. Father, receive our praise and thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord in heaven, we are commencing today's Bible study in your name. Father, lead us through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the Spirit of the Lord descend and teach us so that we can understand in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for your answer. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, I invite your friends and family, let us all come together for this um, interactive Bible study session. I would really, really like us to interact today as one family in the Lord. I want us to call in to ask questions so that we won't waste much of our time. Uh, the number to call in, please pin it down on the screen. The number to call in is 202-600-6222. So we are going to call that number to ask questions based on the facts before us on this table. And today we are going to read Proverbs 6, 19b. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 19b. And false witness that speaketh lies. A false witness that speaketh lies. That was what we treated last week. So today we are treating the part B, which is going to be the grand finale. And he that soweth discord among brethren. He that soweth discord among brethren. So the topic for today is he that soweth discord among brethren. Now let me ask you. My fathers and mothers watching me, my brothers and sisters, children, we are treating he that soweth discord amongst brethren. Let me explain what discord means, because some people may not understand. Discord means strife. It means uh, when there is lack of concord, when there's lack of unity, disagreement. It's, um, it means uh, conflict. Another word for it is, uh, maybe we can say fighting. So, the Bible is saying, he that causes discord among brethren, or he that soweth discord among brethren. So, conflict, fighting, quarrel, disagreement, they are another word for discord. Now, as a Christian, are you in this category do you sow discord amongst people? Do you cause issues to arise among your fellows that you call Christians? If you are in the business of doing that, you are committing a big sin. A lot of people are in this category. They commit this sin, but unfortunately, they don't even know that they are committing a very big sin. But unfortunately, this sin is listed among the seven sins that God hates. God did not just hate them. 
He called those things abomination. You know, when they say something is an abomination, it's something that you should not even try at all. It's a taboo. It's a no-no. So, he that soweth this corn amongst brethren is a taboo before God. It's a no-no. Let us check the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 12. A naughty person. A naughty person. A wicked man. A wicked man. Walketh with a forward mouth. Walketh with a forward mouth. Yes. He winketh with his eyes. Uh huh. He speaketh with his feet. Uh huh. He teacheth with his fingers. Yes. Forwardness in his heart. Yes. He deviseth mischief. Continually. Yes. He soweth discord. He deviseth mischief continually. So they they don't have an end to doing evil. They don't have an end to causing conflicts between people. They don't have an end to causing quarrels. They stir up fight. Anywhere they go, they stir up fight. Are you in this category, child of God? Are you in the business of sowing discord in your working place? Are you in the business of sowing discord within your family? Are you in the business of causing conflicts, even in the church of the Lord? Such an individual is referred to as a stumbling block to other people. The Lord Jesus Christ referred to such an individual as a stumbling block. Only cursing. If you look at what Jesus said in Luke 17, Luke 17 verse 1 to 2, he actually laid a curse on such an individual. Anybody who causes discord among brethren. Luke chapter 17. Let us read from verse 1 and 2. Then said he unto the disciples. Jesus said unto his disciples. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. Wait there. You see, there's no way we can live together without offending each other. There's no way we can move on together without a day of quarrel. There's no day... There's no how we can mingle as friends, as one family, without divisions of opinion. We have diverse opinion. We have differences. You know, we have a lot of things that we may not agree upon. But don't be the one that will be sowing the seed of discord. The seed of discord, God detests it. It's an abomination in the sight of God. God is saying here that it is not possible that conflicts will not come. Yes, Amaja will fight. Things will happen. You know, quarrels will come up. Disagreements will happen. But if you are the one causing it, woe be died you. That is what this Bible is saying. He said, then he said to the disciples, it is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto, unto him. him. Womb they come. Now, you are the causer. Of that discord. You cause that conflict in that church. You cause that quarrel in that church. You cause that husband and wife to fight. You have sown discord. You need to pray. Because it's a sin that the Lord detests so much. And Jesus is saying something powerful here. Can you read verse 2? If it were better for him that a milestone were hanged about his neck. You see, a troublemaker. This is the judgment Jesus is prescribing for such a troublemaker. Yes? And he cast into the sea. They should just throw him into the sea. Yes? Then that he should offend one of these little ones. Thank you. You see, we read this place all the time, but we do not connect to this scripture, that God is saying something powerful. Anybody who goes around to cause conflict, anybody who goes around to cause quarrel, cause fight, the Bible says it is even better for that person to, they should hang a milestone around his neck and throw him into the deep sea. So, such an individual is a stumbling block. Amen. Amen. Such an individual, Jesus Christ is saying, is not even worthy to live. Then, by their fruit, you shall know them, as the saying goes. 
To know such people is not that difficult. Their ways, their actions, it will show the kind of people they are. The way they think in their heart, the way they talk, you know, they, 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 will, they will always, you know, have a way that you will know that, no, this person is a troublemaker. You see, troublemakers who sow this call, they do not follow the wisdom of God. They do not have the wisdom of God in them. So it is easy for you to know them. When they talk, you will know this is a troublemaker. Do you know why they say the foolish man opens his lips all the time, but a wise man does not? A wise person will not talk all the time. Anybody that talks too much, at a point in time, there will be a time the person will start telling lies. Because when you talk too much, it's telling us you are unable to breathe your tongue. You are unable to tame your tongue. You are unable to control your tongue. You might be saying something that will end up being uh, sinful with that tongue. Let us see what James has to say in the book of James chapter 3. James 3 verse 13. He that soweth discord among brethren. James 3 13 to 18. James chapter 3, verse Who is 13. a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Now listen, anybody who sowed discord is not a wise person. Anybody who, who, who conflicts among brethren, who causes trouble, is not a wise person. But the Bible is saying here that, who is, is a, a wise, wise man, man and endued with knowledge among you? That is endued with knowledge among you. Let him show out of a good conversation. Let him show out of a good conversation. His works with meekness of wisdom. His work with meekness of wisdom. Wait there. Anybody that causes fights, that person lacks wisdom. The way they talk in their conversation, you will not see any element of meekness in them. You will not see any element of knowledge in them. You will not see any element of wisdom in them. So if they are truly wise as children of God, they will not subject themselves, their heart, to the devil to be manipulated and used to cause discord among brethren. This is a terrible sin that the Lord detests so much. Read verse 14. But if ye have bitter envying, if you have bitter envying and, and strife in your heart, Glory not, mm -hmm. and lie not against the truth. So, when you have all this in your mind, you are not of God. You are not a child of God. As a matter of the fact, Jesus hates you. God does not like you because you have allowed evil seed to germinate in your life. Somebody is calling. Hello, bless you. Hello. Oh, we lost that caller. Where are we? Verse 14, yeah. But Read verse 15. This wisdom descended not. From above. From above. Now, if you are the one causing confusion in the church, in the house, at your job, you have wisdom, but your wisdom is of the devil. You have wisdom, but your wisdom is not of God. He says, this wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. There are a lot of people that are so wise, but their wisdom will never make anything good to come. Their wisdom is the devilish wisdom, just like the wisdom of a snake. If you gather all the animals, the Bible describes the snake as a devilish animal, a very trickish animal, and it showcased its trickish ability in the life of um, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's so manipulative. When you see such a manipulative individual, they end up sowing discord amongst brethren. Yes. This For, was not... This was for where envy and strife is. Yes. There is confusion. Now listen, this set of people that sow discord among brethren, they have this attribute, they envy other people. 
That is one. They envy people. And when there is envy, when there is strife, there is confusion, and every evil work we abide. So for you to have sanity in your environment, check who you mingle with. If you are mingle with people, if you mingle with people that always come to report to you all the time, ah, labaja sope, labaja sope, labaja sope, be very careful. You can never have peace in that your environment. Because most of the news that comes, if you don't vet it well, you misbehave, you miscalculate, and you misjudge others. The Lord be with you. Yes, but the wisdom, but the wisdom that is from above yes, is first pure, pure, then peaceable, peaceable, gentle, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Yes, full of mercy, full of mercy, and good fruit, and good fruit, without partiality, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So don't deal with hypocrites. When people are full of pretense, they are so hypocritic in their behavior, they will end up sowing discord among brethren. There is no way they, 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 there's no way they can be agents of peace with the level of hypocrisy in them. Be with people that are real. Check your environment. Check your friends. Choose your friends. The Bible says, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. There are people that you do not need in your life. You cannot be a friend to everybody. You cannot be um, everybody's friend. No. Choose those people that will be close to you. Choose those people that will be your friend. There are some people that you don't even need in your life. Stop going for them. Stop going after them. The more you go away from them, the less trouble you will face in life. Read. And the fruit, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So for you to know those people that are righteous, they always want to make peace. As the Bible says, make peace with all men. God wants us to live in peace. Why do we fight each other? Why do we revel against each other? Why do we go against each other? Why do we speak ill of each other? It is not a spirit that is from above. It is not a wisdom that is from God. Anybody you see having that attribute of speaking ill about people is a devilish human being. Because it's an attribute that belongs to the devil. That person can never be an agent of peace. So if you are choosing a friend, I believe you should look for people that will give you peace of mind. And not people that will cause trouble. Be careful as a child of God to avoid the company of such people. In order to live a trouble-free life, you need to choose your friend. Mark them. Identify them. Know who to mingle with. There are people you need to mark and identify in your life. There are people you need to separate yourself from. There are people you need to avoid. In the book of Romans chapter 16 verse 17, there are actually people that you need to avoid. Let us see. Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17. So, sometimes avoiding people is not a sin. There are people you can avoid because you don't want them to confuse your life. You don't want them to put your life in jeopardy. You don't want them to put your life in trouble. Romans 16, verse 17. I will read. It says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Avoid them. Hallelujah. You can mark that in your Bible. The Bible clearly says, avoid them. Because if you don't avoid them, they will confuse you. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by the words, that the good words, and fair speeches, they deceive the heart of the simple. So, there are people that are yet not, you know, that they are yet to be grounded in Christ. They are not strong. They are baby Christians. When they meet with people like this, they confuse them. 
They turn their faith around. They manipulate them and change their opinion about Christ. Because they are agents of the devil. They are here on a mission. Read Proverbs chapter 22 verse 10. It is so similar to what Romans is saying in 16:17. Proverbs 22 10. Proverbs 22.10. Yes. Before you read that, if you have any question, you can ask. Call 202 600 6222. He that sowed discord among brethren. If you have any question, you can ask. Yes. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 10. Cast out the scorner, and contention shall go out. Read it again. Cast out. Cast out this corner this corner and contention shall go out contention shall go out yes strife and reproach shall cease Ijama pari. so what you need to check in that your environment who do you need to cast out this corner who is this corner he that soweth discord among brethren don't mingle with them don't be seen with them don't go into their company they will always cause you trouble. And what they will cost you, it might take you a long time to fix it. You don't want to live a life of trouble. The Lord does not have that for your life. You need to live a life that is free of trouble. So you need to know what you are doing. Any question? So it is always good and healthy for us as children of God to be vigilant enough to know what is going on around us, check your surroundings, discern, pray for the spirit of discernment, discern who to mingle with, discern who will be your friend. There are a lot of people, even in the churches today, that are not broken, yet they call themselves Christian. There are a lot of people that are not born again today, and yet they call themselves, I am born again. But if you hear what is coming out from their mouth, you begin to wonder, does this person go to church at all? Of course they go to church, but they go there for something else. They are not broken. Their mind is not actually with God. They are actually in the church to perpetrate evil for their father, the devil, to cause discord, to cause chaos among brethren, yet they claim to be children of God, but they are of their father, the devil. They are sent to cause discord among brethren. Be careful for such people, even in the house of God. Some even say they are prophetess. Some, they are prophets, but they are agents of the devil because they will always sow discord. Be careful. There's a Zion song. I'm going to sing it, though it's in Yoruba, but I will interpret it. He said, there are many false prophets that are using the spirit manipulatively. They manipulate the spirit of the Lord as if it is a gift they have. Meanwhile, they don't have it. They are manipulators. Now, they sow discord even in the house of the Lord. They are contractors. People contact them to say what is in their mind. I see uh, there, there was a time a case was reported to me. A lady was very beautiful. She goes to a church and there was this brother the man loves him so much. I mean, loves the lady, but he couldn't approach the lady. We have a caller. Hello? Hello, good afternoon. God bless you. You are on a live Bible study interactive session with Prophet Nifemi. Sorry, hello, how are you doing? I just have I'm good. Where are you calling from? Okay. You have a question for us? Yes. Okay. Um, I just want to know how I, I how can I identify or recognize this sower? A sower of discord in the... In my church. Oh, yeah. in your church. 
How yeah. can you identify a sower, a sower of discord? discord. Yeah, mm. in my church. Mm. God bless you. Now, unfortunately, a sower of discord has no tribal mark. A sower of discord can be a light complexion person or a dark person. So you cannot even identify them by mere looks. And there is no almighty formula to solve this equation. But be prayerful. Stir up your discerning spirit. There is something we call discerning spirit. When you have that discerning spirit and you are so vigilant, easily you can tell. Let us see what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 6. Let us see Proverbs chapter 6 verse 12. A naughty person. 6 12, right? A naughty person. A naughty person. A wicked man. Uh-huh. Walketh with forward mouth. Walketh with a forward mouth. Yes. He, now, he by the speeches that is coming out from them, you will know. By what they say, you will know. By the virtue of the content of their speeches and statements and testimonies, you will know that this person is a sower of this quote. Read on. Madam, read. He winketh with eyes. He speaketh with his feet. Now, this verse, that is verse 13, right? He what? He does what with his eyes? He winketh with his eyes. He winketh. Now, observe, there's something we call body language. He winketh with his eyes and what? He speaketh with his feet. They speak with their feet. So they have a way they talk, Ara Wombale, bra, 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 bra. When you see that kind of individual, the Spirit of God is gentle. Anybody that speaks with the eyes, speak with the feet, blah, 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 blah. They talk all the time. You will know this person. Mm -mm. Yes? He teaches with his fingers. He teaches with his fingers. Body language. Concentrate on people's body language. So the first one is be mindful, be observant of their speeches, number one. Number two, observe their body language. Number three, don't join their group. Because if you join their group, you, you will suffer the same sin with them. Because you will join them in doing the evil thing they are doing. So be very careful. The only way you can identify them, by their fruits. By what they say, by their attitude and behavior. You will know that this is not a child of God. God bless you. And uh, they are always sneaky in communication. They know how to talk. They have a way of deceiving people. They have this manipulative power in their tongue. They can lie. They can twist things. They are persuasive. They can easily change your mind. You know. So be careful. That is how you know them. By their fruit. God bless you. I have another caller. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. God bless you. Good evening, sir. You are on the live show, Interactive Bible Study with Prophet Nifemi. Where are you calling from? Maryland. You're calling from Maryland? Yes, sir. Okay, God bless you. You have a question for us? Yes, yes sir. Okay. So my question is, is it possible to go to church and not be at peace with every um, member at the church? Like, is it possible to avoid some people in church? Is it okay? Is it good for a Christian to avoid people in church? Hmm. God bless you. That is a very, very deep one. Is it possible to go to church and not be at peace with everyone in the church? That is the first one, right? Yes. Then... Is it good or possible to avoid? How did you say that? Let's say it again. Let me get you. Is it good for a Christian to avoid people in church? Some oh. people in church. Mm. Thank you. God bless you. Now, Amen. it is good to be at peace with everyone. The Bible says that, I think, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, as, uh, let's take Romans 12. Let's look at. There's a verse in Romans 12 that says that, verse 18. 
Romans 12, verse 18. If it be possible, as much as, as light in you, as much as light in you, live peacefully with all men. Hallelujah. Live peacefully with all men. So, the Bible has clearly stated that. But at the same time, you must understand that some people, they don't want your time. Some people, they don't want you giving attention to them. They can only make you go down in your Christian life. So you have to be careful. The fact that you must make peace with every man, you must choose your friends. Okay? There are some companies that do not want your time. You can only make peace reign by avoiding their company. So, if you avoid them, it's good. Like I said it in a book now in Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 says, avoid them. So, you can avoid them. I think that will answer you. Uh, Romans 16, 17 says, Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Avoid them. So, you can actually avoid them. The Bible gives room for you to avoid it. Okay. Uh, before I will finish with you, let's share something together in uh, the book of Titus. The book of Titus, I know a lot of people, they don't even read that portion of the Bible. Titus. Okay. Titus, because we all like to eat Titus, so we don't eat, we don't, we don't read Titus. Titus chapter 3, verse 9. But avoid foolish questions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the Lord. For they are unprofitable and vain. They are what? They are all profitable. Okay, maybe you are going to church now and they say, this is how we do in this church. They keep asking foolish questions all the time. Avoid it. Continue. Read. A man that is an heretic after the first and second abomination reject, knowing that he is such is subverted and sinned, being condemned of himself. Now, what the Bible is saying here is that maybe you have an issue with somebody, you correct him the first time. He still repeated the same thing the second time. And you correct him again. And yet he's repeating it. It's better you just pack your load and, you know, avoid that kind of individual. Because if you don't, that person has given you a piece of his or behavior that he can never change. The leopard cannot change. His. There are some people that are ready to die with some attitude they cannot change. Like the people that like to cause trouble. Troublemakers, they hardly change. So all you can do is to go away from them in order to avoid trouble if you really really love your peace god bless you amen sir. thank you so like i was saying before before the caller called him this man loves this lady and he was unable to go to her so instead he went to a prophet and bribed the prophet another caller is calling Hello? Hello? Please, can you lower the volume of your TV or your computer that you are listening from? God bless you. Interactive Bible study with Prophet Nifemi. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Virginia. Virginia. God bless you. Mm. I know every teaching is all of, I mean, the end part of it is so that we can make the kingdom of heaven. Yes. So, I have this thing that is bothering me. At my job, I take care of elderly people, old people. Okay. Uh, most especially people with dementia, you okay. know? Okay. So, but I wear a crucifix um, around my neck. Mm. So there was this man that I, I was taking care of. He has dementia. He's in his 90s. 
but he can still talk. So when he told me, he said, how? Oh, you're wearing a cross. I said, yes. He said, are you a believer? I said, yes. He said, what do you believe in? I said, Jesus Christ. That's why I'm wearing a crucifix. And then he said, you are lucky that I wish I, I had believed. Mm. I wish I could believe in Jesus Christ. I wish I had believed in him something before now. So I was now trying to tell him that it's not too late. You are still alive. You can still give your life to Christ and everything. Then he was telling me it's too late. Mm. It's too late. It's too late. That now it's too late. And all of a sudden, the dementia, I mean, sickness came upon him again. And then he started saying something that you know how they come mm -hmm. in and out of that. Yes, you yes. Know? Yeah. So, and then I left the room. I was so sad. Mm -hmm. So I now started asking my spirit, is it too late? Is it because now he has dementia? He can't think anymore. He can't. I mean, I don't know. So I, I, I was... I was actually rushing home today so I can call you and ask you. That right. is it too late? Because I know the Bible says even some people at the 99th hour that they will still be saved if they come to Christ. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. My dear sister, you have work to do. And this work that you have to do will be recorded in the book of life for you. The man is dead now. Oh my lord. But I've been pondering on it ever since. What where when did this happen? When did he die? It was around last year this happened, but ever since then it's been on my mind and I couldn't just tell anybody. But I just remember that ah, Prophet Nifemi, you know you just started this program. Maybe if you have started a long time ago, I would have Oh been. my god, this is <laughs> this is so painful. It is never too late to accept Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it clear. And in John 3, 16, it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, even if you are a murderer, if you are a thief, whoso adulterous person, if whosoever believe in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. So all that person needed to do is just to confess, I believe in Jesus Christ. I receive him as my Lord and pastor. That is just the only thing you should have let the man do. Jesus gave this example on the cross of Calvary when he was about to give up the ghost. There were two thieves beside him. The one on the right, the one on the left. Both were condemned criminals and they were condemned to death. So they had already passed judgment. But as this saying that Anu Man Shogulori Dajo, they were already judged. And despite the judgment of the world, at the dying minute when Jesus was to die, he looked at the right hand and said, Today you shall be with me in paradise. The man confessed Jesus as his Lord and Savior. How did it happen? He was condemning the other person. That why are you criticizing Jesus? We are full of sin and we are being punished for our sin. But Jesus is being punished for, for no reason. He is not a sinner. And he said, Jesus Christ, remember me in your kingdom. That's all. And because of that statement, his sins were forgiven. Everything he has done on earth that was evil and bad, God forgive him. So that is what you should have just done to that uh, Baba. But it's unfortunate it that I pray, I pray, maybe that conversation could yield mercy for him. I just pray. But I will be in prayer with you too so that you can also have peace of mind. Because um, it, it looks like a spanner lost. But then we are going to still pray so that you won't have that heavy heart. You don't have, you won't know that guilt in your mind. The Lord will bless you. Amen. So, on another time, when you have such an encounter, do your best to I'm make them to see I Christ. Say, I wanted to say the second one. Because I keep encountering, I don't know why God makes me, I mean, why I keep meeting people and they're speaking to me this way. Mm. There was another woman, she died to it last year, of course. And I tried, because of the experience with the other man. Can you hear me, sir? I can hear you. So I was telling her, I told her that, um, can we pray so that you can, I mean, she was dying, we all knew she was going to die. And I was trying to pray with her. 
Now let us pray, Leila, so that we can go to heaven. And then tell no, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go to hell. All my friends are in hell. Why would I go to hell? I will be lonely. So I was like, really? Is it that the white people think that the hell that they're going is different from the one that the black people are going or what? And I tried to persuade her. And these things just keep... And, I mean, I was, I'm mixing both together. And what's going on with white people? I don't know. I know some white people believe in God. But she was like, no. She was determined that I, want, I just want to go to hell. That's where my friends are. That's where I'm going to go. So... Well, uh, it, it has nothing to do with uh, race. Mm -hmm. It's an individual thing. There mm -hmm. are white people that believe in God and they believe in heaven. So it's an individual thing. You are here to make a choice. That is why God did not mandate us. He gave us a choice. So you make a choice. By the choice you make, we will have a determination of where you're going. So next time when you have this kind of audio or an encounter, do your best to show Christ to them. Gazette, or gazette a good time that you can speak wisdom to them. Let them understand what God is saying about the kingdom of heaven. Preach it to them. You can hold hands with them, say after me. It could be a minute prayer and that's all. You're done. Because God is happy when you win a soul. So it is well with you. The Lord will empower you. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. God bless you. Wow, that was a wonderful one. Yeah, as I was saying before the caller came in, a prophetess or a prophet can even sow a seed of discord amongst brethren. Another caller? Wow. Hello? Hello. Hello, good evening, God bless you. Interactive Bible study session with Prophet Femi. Where are you calling from? From Maryland. You're calling from Maryland. Okay, you have a question for us? Yes. Thank you. We can hear um, you. I was going to ask that, um, what if I see two or three people planning an evil plot against me? Do I have to tell them what can I do? If you see two or three people, Planning an evil plot against a person. What can you do? Hmm. Yes. Okay. Is that all? Yeah. Um, and then I have another question. Okay. Um, let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Okay. You answer. Uh, ask all the questions so I can answer you at once. You got to ask the second question. Yes, I can hear you. Ask. Um. Then I, I said, what if I speak? Won't I be seen as a tale buried, like revealing secrets? Hmm. So if you see two people or three people planning evil against one person, what can you do? If you speak, wouldn't you become a tale bearer that is revealing secrets? Wow. Okay. Now, what can you do? What you can do is to report such an evil agenda as a child of God. You see, there's a difference between reporting such an evil agenda, there's a difference between doing that and uh, being a tail bearer. Tail bearer is a fufu, I'm a boy. So that one is not I'm a boy. You are trying to reveal the evil secret in order to save a life. Because if you keep quiet and the plan of that evil, if it's been orchestrated, is being carried out, and if they are able to carry it out and they kill that person, you also will be guilty because you heard about the evil plan and you did nothing about it. Okay? okay? Let us see what the Bible has to say in the book of Ephesians. That will buttress my point. Ephesians chapter 5. Let us see verse um, 11. 5.11 And I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Now, 
You saw two people planning evil. There's this saying that if you cannot beat them, you join them. Okay? So now you are at a crossroad. You saw them planning that evil act. So what do you do? You have two options. Is either you join them or you beat them, right? And you don't want to join them, right? So your, your, your way of beating them is to report the issue. 511 is saying, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Underline that in your Bible. Reprove them. Because if you do not report, if you have also taken you have also taken part in that evil doing. And if eventually they succeed, you will join in the punishment. So the only thing you can do is to reprove them. Okay? Did I answer your question? Yes. Now, the second part you said, what if you speak? Won't you be regarded as a tail bearer? Well, I will say no. We cannot regard you as a tail bearer because your report is saving a life. So it will be recorded unto you as doing something good. It will be recorded for you as doing something good. Not as a tail bearer. Because you have revealed that secret in order to save a life. Let us see what the Bible says in the book of um, hmm. Esther. Esther chapter 6. Read Esther chapter 6. There is someone in the Bible called Mordecai. Mordecai had it is just the same thing as this question. Yes. Hallelujah. On that night could not the king sleep. Huh? On that night Esther not... chapter 6 verse 1. Yes. On that night could not the king sleep. The king could not sleep that night. And he commanded to bring the book of record of the chronicles. He said go and bring the book of record. Yes. And they were read before the king. They read the book of record before the king. And it was found written. It was written in the book of record. That Mordecai had thought of Big, Big Tana and Teresh. Yes. Two of the king's chamberlains. Yes. The keepers of the doors. Yes. Who sought to lay hand on the king. After now, these two people were planning evil plots against King Arsworth. They wanted to kill the king. Are you with me, madam? Yes, sir. They were planning to kill the king. But Mordecai discovered them and he revealed the secret. Now, similar to your question, had it been that Mordecai did not report, you know they would have succeeded in killing that king. And if they killed that king, Mordecai will suffer in heaven because he will share part of the punishment with them. Because he saw the evil coming and he did nothing about it. Read, madam. And it was found written. And the king said, The king said, What honor and dignity has been done to Mordecai for this? Yes. Then said the king's servant, uh -huh. that ministered unto him, mm -hmm. There is nothing done for him. Now, the fact that Mordecai revealed that evil plot secret, he received a reward from the king. And it was actually that reward that saved his life. Because Ammon had already planned an evil plot. To kill Mordecai. And he has already erected a tree behind the door. I mean behind the house. Now. The revelation of that secret. That uh, Mordecai did. To have saved the life of the king. Was what actually pushed him into his own glory. So revealing such an evil secret is not a bad idea my dear. It is a sign that you are a child of God and you are saving a life so that you would have succeeded in saving a life. So you are not a tail bearer. God bless you. Did I answer your question? Yes. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. That was a wonderful one. So, before I round up, I'll finish this story. The man went to this prophet and said,
I like Sister Lagbaja. Can you please tell her a vision that the Lord said, I am a husband. And the so-called faith prophet said it. So there are people like that in the church that cause discord. They will say what God has not said. They can tell some, some women that their, their husband is this. They will tell some husband that your wife is this. And they will cause trouble. They will cause quarrel. At the end of the day, they will scatter that marriage. So be very careful in your marriage. Protect your marriage to the best of your knowledge. Protect your home to the best of your knowledge. There are people that are sowing this cult all around. I pray in the name of Jesus, they will not come near your house in Jesus' name. Amen. So, there can be anybody. So, what is your role? When there is a quarrel amongst brethren, you cannot be a child of God and yet you consent into quarrels, you consent into conflicts, you consent into discord. When you are a child of God, the Bible says, make peace with all men. And in the beatitude, when Jesus Christ was teaching in Matthew chapter 5, there is one, um, out of the ten beatitudes, there is one of them in verse 9, I guess, yeah, check Matthew 5, 9. He said, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. They shall be called the children of God. <clears throat> are you a child of God? If truly you are a child of God, then you must learn to make peace with all men at all time. Make peace with all men at all time. Don't allow quarrels in your environment. Don't allow discord in your environment. When people come to you to report fake amiable information to you, you must have discernment to know that no, this person, mm -mm. I don't I don't believe in what this person is saying. Let me give you an example of the seed of discord. As a child of God, you need to be guided. You need to be careful so you won't judge wrongly or fight people unnecessarily. Okay, let's say maybe someone comes to you one day and say, Ah, Sister Buki, I was just coming home and I went to the bathroom and I saw Sister Tola and Sister Tolu close to Ileanu. They were talking about you. If you hear the bad, bad thing they were saying about you, I just came to tell you because I like you. You see that person that came to tell you that information? Be careful. Be careful. Be vigilant. And be guided. Two things to approach to that kind of information. It's possible she actually saw Tolu and Tola truly. And she has come to tell you so that you can be careful. But don't be foolish enough to go and fight Tolu and Tola. Because you are not even sure if what Sister Buki came to tell you is true or not. The Bible mm -hmm. says, find out everything and hold on to the truth. And what do you go to do? Can the AET or shoot it? Find out. Find out the truth before you jump into conclusion. What that person has come to tell you might be a seed of discord. Maybe there's even something glorious that Sister Tolu and Tola will still do for you. By the end of the day, you fight them because of the information Sister Buki brought for you. Meanwhile, the Sister Buki's information is a false information just to break you from the connection that you are supposed to have with Tolu and Tola. Be very guided. Be very careful. Sometimes there are people in your life that are sown there as seed of uplifters. They are those that will uplift you. They are those that will help you and take you to your promised land. But the child of the devil will try to sow seed of discord between both of you. That same person that is to help you, they will come and speak ill of that person to you and speak ill of that person to you. Be very careful before you jump into conclusion so that even you yourself, you will not be the enemy that will be driving those that are supposed to give you favor from your side. It is well with you. Note, strife, discord among brothers, even in church, they are bound to occur. There is nothing you can do about it. If you are in a working place, there is bound to be discord in your work. There is bound to be discord among your workers. 
People can, you know, have diverse opinions. People cannot think the same way. If you have four children, they have different characters. They have different hobbies. They have different behaviors. Some will tell you, Mommy, I want to eat bread this morning, and the other one will say, I want to eat a bar. That is their nature. People are different. So, bringing people together, there's no way you can avoid, I mean, quarrel. It will come, but be very careful. Be very careful. Anyone who purposely causes disruption to the peace in the body of Christ is a child of the devil. The Lord hates such an individual. There is no way that quarrels will not come. But if you are an agent of quarrel, you will be in trouble with God. If you read that Psalm 133, the Lord likes a peaceful environment. The purpose of God for, for the midst of brethren, 133 verse 1 Psalm, God wants us to live in peace. That is God's heart. That is God's intention. That is God's mission for the church, for brethren, for you families. Know, he said, behove. How good and how pleasant it is. How good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. God actually created brothers to dwell together in unity. We are not supposed to oppose each other. We are not supposed to fight each other. We are supposed to be our brother's keepers. So anyone that is around you that is a sower of the seed of discord, avoid such an individual because that person is an agent of the devil. So that is um, what I have to tell you today. Do we have any other question? Check the book of 1 Thessalonians 5.21. Do we have any questions? Check the platforms if we have any other questions. <clears throat> any question? No, sir. In conclusion. 1 Thessalonians 5.21 Whatever you hear about anybody, find out. If they tell you, ah, well, Lagwaja is like this. Ah, Pastor Lagwaja is like this. Sister Lagwaja is this. Sister Lagwaja said that. Find out. Don't foolishly jump into conclusion. No matter how sugar-coatedly they have quoted that report, it might be a seed of discord. If you are not careful, and you end up fighting the wrong person. What are you saying, madam? 5-2. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Hold firm to that which is good. good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Thank you. Anybody that is bringing evil reports, abstain from such an individual. They don't mean well. They are children of the devil. Before I round up, and we're going to pray, I'll tell you this. The father and the grandfather of this court is Satan himself. One day I went to set to a fight between a husband and a wife. What actually caused the quarrel between them was a mere argument that wasn't supposed to lead to quarrel. But unfortunately, devil was present in their home because the home lacks prayer. And I told them this story. At the end of this story, when they had it, the husband that was angry was laughing. The wife that was angry was laughing. I told them that one day Satan passed through a street, and he had two berets on his head. Satan was passing gingerly and gingerly. As he was going, he had a red beret here and a black beret here. So when he was passing, there are people on the right side of the road, they saw the red beret. And the people on the left side of the road, they saw a black beret. And after the devil left that corner, one of them called the other one on the other side. Did you see that red beret that devil is wearing? It's so beautiful. And that one said, ah, what do you mean? Red beret came. Are you blind? It's black now. So what do you mean? Are you stupid? Don't you know colors again? Are you color blind? I say it's red. I say it's black. And they started fighting. And devil went far. He was laughing, rejoicing because he, was, he has succeeded in creating this court. Quarrel, fight between the two brethren. And after like five minutes of the fight, devil was coming back. 
with the same dressing. So now that he had torn, those that saw red here, red was now on this side. Those that saw black here, black was now on this side. And it was coming again. So those people who saw red that time, they saw black. Those that saw black the other time, they saw red. Then they said, ah, this devil is a trickish person. Avoid people like that in your environment. There are people that will come to you, they will say A here, they will say B here. When they say C here, they will tell you D here. When anybody comes to you with an issue or any matter, ask that person, can you say this thing you have told me in the presence of Lagbaja? Surely, solo joy. When the person tells you, ah, no, I don't want him to know, trash that information. That person must be lying. If anybody gives you that information, Labba just said this. What you are saying, can you repeat it? Be, be very guided. Find out the truth before you join any quarrel. Before you join in watering the seed of discord in your job, in your family, in your church. I pray you will not be an agent or a tool in the hand of the devil in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Any question before we pray? No, sir. Bow down your head wherever you are. Begin to pray. Lord, I thank you for the understanding of your word tonight. I thank you for speaking your words through me. Father, Lord, you have taught us the seed of discord. That it is a sin to sow a seed of discord. If there's any way in my life that I am sowing a seed of discord, either knowingly or unknowingly. I surrender, I come down before you, Father, forgive me, begin to pray. Begin to pray. Some people might be causing quarrel unknowingly. They might be sowing seed of discord and they don't even understand they are doing so. Begin to beg for forgiveness now. I don't want to be an instrument in the hand of the devil. I don't want to be a tool to be manipulated by the hand of the devil. Begin to pray. Bring your prayers to an end. Thank you, Father, for you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the success of this Bible study session. We thank you for the callers. We thank you for the listeners. We thank you for the viewers. Father, bless their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we say you will, you will guide us, protect us until... We'll see you again next week. No evil shall befall any of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the spirit of wisdom, let it come upon us to understand your word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for you've answered our prayers. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for being with us. My name is Reverend Prophet Nefemi Akitimoye from Sianan Institute of Zion. I will see you on Friday for another powerful edition of Let Us Pray. Stay tuned, watch out, 4 p.m. on Friday. It's going to be a hot one. God bless you now and forevermore.